It's been almost five years since the JMod 100 was released. Now a small PRS combo amp that John has been using has everyone talking. He's hidden prototypes of the JMod in plain sight before, and now on today's episode we'll dive in and discuss if this PRS combo is the JMod 2.0. So this whole talk and hype around this new amplifier kind of started off when during the Dead & Company fall tour we see this cream colored PRS amplifier on stage with John. And right away, everyone was kind of like, oh, what's this? What's going on here? And this amplifier was seen throughout the rest of the Dead & Company tour. And it was also seen during the Last Train Home ballad version that John released during the video of the recording. You actually see this amplifier being used by John. All right, first I'm gonna discuss what the amp actually appears to be. And it appears to be a limited edition custom 20 amplifier combo. This one specifically was built in 2014 and there was only 20 of them ever made, of course, right? And it appears to be, just by looking at it, that's exactly what it appears to be. John's control knob layout appears to be identical to the custom 20. Uh, the images you're seeing here is comparing John's to one that was for sale I that I found on Reverb a while back. Uh, the control layout appears to be identical and John's even has the custom 20 badge on it as well. But I can see why people might think this is a PRS uh, mayor signature amplifier because John way back when he was road testing the JMod amplifier he was using dummy PRS heads in place of what the JMod actually was trying to kind of hide what this amplifier actually was. But I don't personally think this is a PRS mayor amplifier dummy kind of prototype thing going on. I don't. And there's some pretty strong evidence to suggest that this isn't what is happening. Number one, if you look at the very first show we see this custom 20 amplifier put on stage with Dead & Company, it was the night after John's Dumbland serial number 006, the ODS, died on him. So this amplifier was placed on stage the very next show, Chicago Night 2, and is put on stage. So he adds another amp on stage right after his main one dies. This, I believe, was for backup purposes only in case the Dumbland went down again, that he had another amp on stage. I believe this is also supported by the fact that the PRS combo was not mic'd up at all. There's no microphones placed on it. I saw some people bring that up and then there was discussions around that I saw uh, in a few different threads about, oh, well maybe it was used for stage volume so he could hear it but it wasn't actually being mic'd up. And I can see that, but again, John is wearing headphones for this Dead & Company tour. He's wearing headphones. He isn't really gonna be able to hear at all the stage volume, or at least clearly enough to discern how he's feeling on an amplifier. So if it's not mic'd up, John really isn't getting to hear it. So throughout the Dead & Company tour, that amplifier was not mic'd up. So I genuinely think the amp was on stage. If the downblown went down, Jeremy could run out take the mic set that's in front of the 1x12 combo for the Dumbland, shuffle it, you know, two and a half feet over and put it in front of the Custom 20, have that going for John, and then put the other Dumbland special, serial number 009, on and then remove the mic over. So that John could keep playing and not be down for a lengthy period of time while they switch amps and get his setup back up and running more to what he wants. I think it was just a worst case scenario temporary fix while the Dumbelands were swapped. That's what I personally think. Now I think the evidence that I've stated with Dead & Company strongly supports my theory. But there is one glaring continuity error, I guess, in my theory where the Last Train Home Ballad happens and we see this amplifier being used. Now, my theory and my kind of where I'm going with this, I guess, is that maybe John just really likes that amplifier. He likes how it sounds. It's good enough to be used as a backup on stage with him for Dead & Company. And maybe he just thought, you know what? I've been really liking this amplifier. This was probably filmed around the time of the Dead & Company break too, probably in between the uh, legs of the Dead & Company tour this year. Maybe he just started to really like that amplifier and wanted to use it on a performance. It's really hard to find, of course, in John's fashion and very limited. Why not use it? That's what I think happened. So to sum everything up here for you guys, do I think this is a new PRS Signature Mare amplifier in a dummy shell? No, 
I don't personally think so. Only time is gonna tell if all of a sudden we see a little John Mayer signature combo amplifier or a new PRS signature amp from John, even just in a head format that he just was hiding really well. It's possible, and I'm not saying that it's 100% certain it's not that, but I'm 99.9% .9 sure it isn't. The evidence with Dead & Company, it being on stage, not even mic'd up, uh, being used for just one video performance doesn't really say a whole hell of a lot, to be honest. It's one performance. That's it. So, you guys, I don't think this is a new PRS signature amplifier. I just think it's an amp that John has started to like and wanted to just have some fun and change things up and incorporate a little bit into his rig as just an easy, portable, good-sounding amplifier for backup uses or the odd studio performance. Only time will tell if we see it being used anymore, and I'll be sure to update you guys on any other theories or any other speculation that comes up with this amplifier or any other things considering John's gear as per usual. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, hopefully you guys enjoyed this fun little video. Thanks so much for the support, and we'll see you on the next one.